Hello everybody, my name's Zoe and for my first round match I'm going to show you the aeroplane seating problem. This is a probability problem that I really like. Uh, it's quite surprising. The answer's not really what you'd expect and the solution is really neat. So here is the aeroplane seating problem. So in this problem there's an aeroplane with a hundred seats and there are a hundred passengers getting onto the aeroplane. Each passenger has an allocated seat. Passenger 1 gets on first, but they realise that they've lost their boarding pass. They tell the air steward, who surprisingly says, no problem, sit where you like. Um, so this person's disorganisation is rewarded by being told that they can choose their seat randomly. It's a super relaxed airline. If you're interested in which one, there you go. Then passenger 2 gets on. They're much more organised. They've still got their boarding pass. So they go to their allocated seat, and if it's free, they sit in it. But if it's not free, because person one is in it, then they also choose their seat randomly. And the same thing happens to person three, they sit in their seat if it's free, but if it's not free, they choose their seat randomly. Uh, and again, it's the same for all the passengers, all the way up to passenger 100. Uh, so that's the situation, and those are the rules. Off they go. The problem is, what's the probability that person 100 gets to sit in their own allocated seat. And in order to explore this problem, we're going to have a look at a few possible different outcomes. OK, so I've drawn an aeroplane below. Obviously, those are aeroplane windows. Uh, and behind every window is a seat. Um, and I've coloured in window 1 and 100 purple because it turns out they're quite important. And I'm going to assume that person 1 is allocated seat 1, and so on. So we're going to look at some different outcomes. The first outcome we're going to look at is the one where person 1 chooses their own seat. OK, so, so there's person 1 uh, sitting in their own seat. They're in the right seat. And this means when person 2 gets onto the plane, their seat is free, so they can sit in it. And the same thing happens for person 3. And actually the same thing happens for all the passengers, um, all the way up to 99, and, and even person 100 does get to sit in their own seat. So this is quite a simple outcome. There is one other outcome which is, is as simple. So there's one other outcome which is resolved by just one choice. And we're going to look at that now. So here's person one going to sit in seat 100. They are not in the right seat. Um, and then person two gets onto the plane. And just like last time, their seat is free. So they sit in it. Um, and the same thing happens for person three. And again, the same thing happens from person four all the way up to person 99. But this time, when person 100 gets onto the plane, they see that their seat is taken and they have to sit in the only remaining seat, uh, which is seat one. They are not in the right seat. Um, and if this, these were the only things that could happen, this would be a, be a pretty simple problem. Um, but unfortunately, there are more complicated things that could happen. Uh, so person one could choose to displace um, one of the people uh, allocated seat 2 to seat 99. So let's have a look at what that looks like now. So let's imagine person 1 sits in seat 20. Then person 2 gets on and their seat is free and that's the same for passenger 3 up to passenger 19. But then person 20 gets on um, and they need to find an alternative seat. I'm going to pretend person 20 chooses seat 57, right? It's their favourite number. Um, but then the same thing basically happens again. Person 21 gets on and their seat is free and that's the same situation for passenger 22 all the way up to passenger 56. Um, and it's not until person 57, I did say it was a relaxed airline, um, it's not until person 57 gets onto the, onto the plane um, that somebody then needs to choose randomly again. So person 57 needs to find another seat um, and they could continue this cycle of displacement. But at some point, somebody needs to choose seat 1 or seat 100. And it could be that this happens with person 99 when they're forced to. Or it could happen earlier on. So I'm going to make person 57 sit in seat 1. There we go. They're not in the right seat, but they have chosen a seat that nobody else wants to be sitting in because person 1 is already on the plane. And so that means that everyone else after them gets to sit in their own seats. They've ended the cycle of displacement by sitting in seat 1. Um, there's person 100 sitting in their own seat. But what would have happened if person 57 chose to sit in seat 100? Um, well, they'd be in the wrong seat. But again, apart from for person 100, they're sitting in a seat that 
doesn't disrupt anybody else. So they've ended the cycle of displacement. Person 58 to 99 get to sit in their own seats, and the only difference this time is person 100 ends up in seat 1 because their seat is taken. So at this point, there are a couple of things you might have noticed. Firstly, that person 100 only ever ends up in seat 1 or seat 100. And if you're not already convinced of this, let's do some proof by contradiction. Let's assume instead that the empty seat at the end is one of the ones from 2 to 99. OK, it's empty. But that means it was empty earlier on. That means it was empty when the person who that seat belongs to got onto the plane. And that means they're sitting in it. So that's a contradiction. So person 100 only ever ends up in seat 1 or seat 100. And the second thing you might have noticed is that the fate of person 100 is determined by the choice made by the first person who chooses either seat 1 or seat 100. Whichever seat they don't choose, that's the seat that person 100 ends up in. And it doesn't matter when this happens. It doesn't matter if it's person 57, like it was in my last example, or if it's person 99 that does this, or even if it's person 1 right at the beginning. It doesn't matter how long the cycle of displacement goes on for, and we really don't care about that. All that matters is which of seat 1 or 100 is chosen first by somebody else. And there's no reason why somebody would, choose, would be more likely to choose seat 1, or less likely to choose seat 1, than seat 100. Because they're choosing randomly. They're equally likely to choose seat 1 or seat 100. OK, and so the question in this problem is what's the chance that the last person getting onto the plane gets to sit in their own seat? Well, there are only two options for where they could sit. And each of those options is equally likely to happen. So the answer is a half. I was really surprised when I saw this. Because when I heard the problem for the first time, I, th I thought it was going to be quite complicated. I kind of imagined myself doing the sort of tree diagram from hell. But, but in fact, we haven't done any calculations. And that's why I really like this problem. Because the solution is so simple, it's so elegant, um, it sort of exemplifies what maths to me is, is all about. Um, so sort of the ability to take a really sort of complicated, messy situation um, and reduce it to just a few simple statements that make visible the, the structure and sort of essence of the thing. To me, that's what maths is all about, right? And, and that's why you should vote for this problem, because it demonstrates just that.